Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Storytime Fun. I dedicate this next story to my peace-filled and loving grandchildren, Denver, Summer, Violet, and Ethan. Today's story is out of the Disney's Christmas Storybook. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Christmas in the Bell Tower. From the Bell Tower, Quasimodo watched the snowfall blanketing the city in white. It was Christmas Eve. Through the windows of the houses below, he could see blazing hearths and happy families gathered around lighted trees. Paris is so beautiful at Christmas time, he sighed. But here I am, surrounded by cold stone walls and all alone. What do you mean alone? scowled Victor. The gargoyle sprang to life. What do you think we are? Just part of the scenery? added Hugo. Old Laverne shuffled toward him. Face it, boys, we don't count for much. Quasi's pining for a visit from his girlfriend. Esmeralda's not my girlfriend, Quasi protested. She's just a girl, said Victor. And a friend, said Hugo. The gypsies are having a big feast tonight, said Quasi. Esmeralda's probably roasting a goose. There's no reason to hope that she'd have time to think of you, said Victor, winking at Hugo. After Quasi had saved Esmeralda's life, she had promised to visit him often, and she had kept her word up to now. You could go to visit her, said Hugo. No, said Quasi. I'm in charge of the bells. First I must ring vespers, then the midnight bells. Never mind, said Victor. Why don't we make our own celebration? This place could use a little cheer, said Hugo. Laverne gave a loud whistle. Seconds later, a row of pigeons lined the parapet. She whispered to them, and off they flew. Within moments, they returned, carrying fir branches, holly boughs, and strands of mistletoe in their beaks. Now get to work, Quasi, said Laverne. As Quasi decked the walls, he felt his loneliness leave. He was a part of Christmas after all. How about some candles, said Victor. It's frightfully dim in here. Quasi went down to the cathedral and borrowed from the large supply of altar candles. Soon the place was aglow and every bit as festive as the homes in the city below. For supper, Quasi brought out his usual bread and cheese. It seemed humble fare for the richly bedecked table. I should have thought, he said, to fix a better meal. A feast is not what you eat, said Laverne. It's who you share it with. You're right, said Quasi, and I'm lucky to be with the most steadfast friends around. You got that right, said Hugo with a grin. Just then, they heard footsteps in the stairway hurried footsteps. Who could it be? The cathedral porter looking for his candles? The police checking for fire in the tower? The angry ghost of Frollo bent on ruining Christmas Eve? The door burst open. Quasi gasped. <gasps> Esmeralda! Merry Christmas! She cried. In her outstretched arms, she held a big platter of roasted goose. 
She was followed by Dally and the band of gypsies, the men strumming and piping carols, and the women carrying baskets of bread and fruit and fancy yuletide pastries. The gypsies hoped to make Quasimodo's holiday very special this year. Esmeralda looked around the beautifully decorated tower room. You told him, she said to the gargoyles. Quasi shook his head. I didn't know you would come, but I must admit, I wished. And your wish has come true, said Esmeralda. She said about arranging Quasi's table with a yuletide feast. But when she turned to him, he was gone. Quasimodo! Then she heard the Vesper bells ringing in Christmas Eve. They sounded more joyous than they ever had before. Well, that's it for today. See you next time.